Well, I suppose we found our level. So tough with that bad boy talk. I'm gonna get it how I'm living. I'm gonna walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Ugh, what's happening people welcome back to football therapy welcome to your complete breakdown of brentford 2 chelsea 2 uh the spoils shared in the west london derby in the premier league this afternoon a point apiece and meh i mean you know do you know what the funny thing about chelsea is and i said this on my instagram but i'm gonna say it again here so the goal ultimately won brentford a point here was that overhead kick from Visser, Johan Visser, right? Okay. And we can only dream, 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 dream of a footballer that could score a goal like that in this current side. And for context, boys and girls, this is, I worked out, I think he's Brentford's third choice striker. Of course, Tony. And then in Burmo, um, obviously they used a lot of Neil Mopai lately, actually over Visser, but I'll still say Johan Visser is the third choice striker of Brentford Football Club. Chelsea, big so-and-so swinging spenders Chelsea. We could only dream of someone who could finish like that. So for context on the day, it was uh, Gusto setting up a Jackson header. Uh, we go in 1-0 leading at halftime. Roslev um, equalises a few minutes into the second half. And in the 69th minute, Johan Wissa scores the overhead kick. Um, the opening 15 minutes was dominant from... Uh, I'm going to talk about all this properly and the, and the players. And we've got to talk about Pochettino, I guess, right? Because who who else do you talk about? when the, You know, the buck will eventually stop with the manager. And in the meantime, we can rightly and correctly be, um, you know, mindful of the situation at Chelsea, sort of analytical and be, you know, fair. Because it's such a terrible job, the Chelsea managerial job at the moment. Um, But yes, eventually you will have to look at the manager. Now, the players are still playing for the manager and the fact that we've got... Uh, a very strong opportunity to get to the FA Cup semi-final, which is Wembley itself, isn't it? So that could be already another trip to Wembley this season for Pochettino. So it's tough. Anyway, look, the big talking point here is we started the game with a um, back three. We ended with a 4-2-3-1, Pochettino's favoured formation, especially I think that's when we went went behind, maybe. Um, but we started the game with a back three. It was uh, Chelsea's undisputed first choice goalkeeper, Petrovic in goal. Um, the the three centre-backs of uh, Trevo Chalaba playing in the middle, and he was flanked by Disassi and uh, Levi Colwell. Now, this probably makes sense. He, they were, you know, Pochettino wanted to get Chalaba in their height he, we know he likes height. And to be fair, like against Brentford, you know, that play long ball, play for set pieces, transitional, lots of aerial duels. I get it. Height, fine. You know, even the sexy football, total football, Croyfian Guardiola has opted for height in a lot of big, big men when he won the treble last season. So I get it. I ain't got an issue for that. I don't think Trevor Chalab was quite up to speed yet. Of course, um, his first start of the season was that last FA Cup tie. So putting someone in the middle of the back three is the safest role you can play in a starting eleven. I think that's why Tuchel put Thiago Silva there because he said, "Look, we gotta have Thiago Silva's ball playing ability and you know leadership on the pitch." But how do I accommodate him? Well, we play a back three system, and this was years ago, bro. This was freaking years ago. So the fact how we've even thought about playing a thirty-nine-year-old Silva in a back four recently with a you know with a really embryonic midfield so that's not going to offer him much protection is absolutely nothing short of chicken oriental mate so yeah that was the back three and then rather appropriately we had wing backs gusto right wing mac of course registered an assist and put in loads of magnificent crosses we will go over player performances in a moment uh chili at left wing back of course put an amazing you know he's a what he's a champions league winning left wing back chill well so i get it uh and then in the midfield you had enzo caicedo uh Gallagher and um so it was like a free uh free two wasn't it so we had then we had Cole Palmer and Nico Jackson up top substitute appearances from Mudrick and Sterling uh Chilwell went to left back we made it back four and um 
when uh, Colwell came off and Fernandez came off for Mudrick. And Mudrick played in the conventional number 10 later on. Now, it was, uh, I think it was also to match up the 3 5 2 of Brentford. We played this sort of same formation and we did look like we cancelled each other out, certainly for the first. 30 minutes, 35 minutes until Nico Jackson scored a goal. I'm capitalizing off um, one of what would be many beautiful Malo Gusto crosses into the box. Uh, by far and away, our best player on the day, Malo Gusto. And to be fair to Nico Jackson, this was a great header. Not the best defending from Brentford, but it was a great header. My Google Assistant has just said, I'm happy, you're happy. I'm freaking happy. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> where did that come from? That scared the heck out of me. Uh, yes, but um, look, Nico Jackson, not a centre forward, being played as centre forward, is still a generally young player. He gets the same caveats and ex- as excuses as a lot of Chelsea players, you know. But um, he missed a couple of good chances on his left foot. Uh, he took poor shots. Uh, he rounded the goalkeeper, should have done better. But he scored a good header, so... <sighs> You sort of get away with it and you score a goal. I like Nicholas Jackson. I've said it here. He just shouldn't be Chelsea's main man. Absolutely shouldn't be. Maybe, maybe he should be Chelsea's starting left winger. And, you know, as a starter and um, Mudrick's a finisher. Mudrick's new role is a number 10, apparently, you know. But, but yeah, I if you said to me, Jan, do you want to sell Nicholas Jackson? I think, no, I think he's a good signing. 30 million pound attacker. I've shown he can score goals, shown he can be physical in the Premier League and play in different positions. That's a good £30 million signing from Villarreal. I have no issue with that. Keep him. He's always available as well, which is great. I think it's a good signing. You know, I wouldn't be like, get him out, get Nicholas Jackson out. But no, he shouldn't be Chelsea's starting striker. It's simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to dig him out. And he scored a goal. I mean, he gave out a lot of the big end with the shush, but I kind of get it. Why not be confident? You know, why not have the ego? I'd rather you do that than just fold and be really soft. And look, we go into the this, this, the halftime. I do my, uh, you know, halftime live stream like I always do on um, Instagram at Football Yannick if you're interested in following me. And um, we're all a bit like meh, missed chances, but like, you know, we go and win this 2 0, 3 0, whatever. It's all good. And we're, it's a great result. Because, of course, Brentford are in poor form. This is a great result for them, Charity FC again, you know. Um, they've taken four points of us in the Premier League this season, despite being lower table and worried about relegation which is just insane bro so <laughs> they score uh the equalizer from roslev um and it's a it's a yeah, it's a poor bit of defending from chelsea i feel like disassi was very very poor there kaiseido makes a good tackle the ball comes out you know disassi has the opportunity to clear it i think he second guesses it because i wonder if he feels like he might give away a penalty but yeah, he doesn't clear it and they get the equaliser. And but 19 minutes later, we see that Johan Wissa overhead kick, Frank Onyeka assist. Uh, and like, yeah, I'll, I'll say it again. Like we could only dream of players that have the confidence to finish like that. And he's Brentford's. When did they sign Wissa? For how much? Do you know what I mean? Like probably absolute nominal fee in the championship. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? That like we can't. We just, uh, just probably. It's probably just because he's a senior player without stress and pressure on him. Like uh, this probably comes down to that, bro. Do you know what I mean? Um, Pochettino starts panicking. Oh my god, we're losing to Brentford again. Uh, let's make changes. He takes off Fernandez. Granted, Fernandez looked gassed. He didn't uh, track the aforementioned uh, Roslev on the run as well. So yes, Enzo comes off, which means Gallagher drops into the Enzo position, and Mikhailo Mudrik comes on to take to to take the vacated position to, to, to occupy the vacated position of um. Gallagher, if that makes sense. Uh, so yes, we've. Uh, I think now at this point as well. I know we're not. We're, we wait a few more minutes before we go to a back four. That's when Sterling comes on for Colwell, and then we go to a back four. The 83rd minute, Cole Palmer puts in a good cross for Axel Disassi to score the uh, equaliser. Then for two two, and then we've got. You think, all right, we've probably got about 12, 12 minutes all in all to go and get a winner. Uh, and we had a really good chance when Mudrick was breaking through, did some really good uh, work there, you know, drew a foul just outside the box. Uh, we had a free kick, we did some silly routine, and it went back to the goalkeeper. And uh, then they see out there, probably well-deserved draw, Brentford. And um, and it's very frustrating. <sighs> 
Look, man, Brentford, they do this to they do this to big teams at the community stadium at home sometimes. They've done it the last couple of years. They've done it to like Arsenal and who is it, Man United. They've done it to other teams before, but they were in poor form and we had an opportunity to keep them continued in poor form. In terms of, let's just run through players quickly. I feel like Petrovic was fine. Um I don't know. I have to watch the goals back a little bit more. I don't think he was actually great on the first goal. I think he was part of the poor clearance mix-up. But still, I generally, as a whole, I'm very pleased with Petrovic. And I don't want to see Sanchez back in goal. Um, Chilwell, I see... Chilwell, he can be he can be transformative for, a left, for the whole left-hand flank. And he's not been there. He might have been fine. But for me, he's... he's He's playing so much within himself. He can be way, way better. Maybe that's tactical. Maybe that's the manager not getting the most out of him, possibly. But I, I haven't, you know, been so happy with Chilwell. All of the centre backs, I actually think were okay. I think Decesi for the first goal was poor, but um, you know, the overhead kick is it is what it is. It's you know, the rebound lands to him. It's a little bit fortuitous the way you know. I think it comes to come off Tony or Nyeka. Who's actually come off the second one? Uh, comes off on Yeka. The way it's not it's not a thought about assist set up for that finish. It was all instinct, so it's whatever. I don't think that the centre backs were awful. I think Chilwell could be better. I think Gusto was really good. We can you know, he got obviously an assist, he could have had one or two more. Really, really good. I think Kaiseido was actually good in this game. Uh he obviously catches a lot of heat. Um Again, young player just got here. I feel like I said it'll be a lot better. Uh, Fernandez, okay. He did look absolutely gassed when he got taken off. Gallagher, not not very good. I mean, well, he's okay. I feel like he's um does what he was doing best. But uh, Gallagher could be way better if he gets. I don't know, man. Like a, he, I know he's got goals recently, so I don't want to criticize him. But because I do, I want Gallagher to stay. I think he's a great player, but. You know, when you when one of your forwards gets a goal, you want some. I don't know, you want a goal from the midfielders, an assist from the midfielders. You didn't get any of that today. Palmer was good. He got an assist, uh, of course, towards the end, the equaliser. Um, he did mess up that free kick. I'd say that they trolled planned, and it was a pretty messy. Probably should have just let Palmer try and hit it because if you'd looked, uh, flecking at the sun in his eyes, just fucking sorry, I didn't mean to swear. Just, just put one, just try and put one in bins or anywhere, and he's going to have to try and deal with the sun in his eyes, so I don't know why they didn't just do that, I think that's mental, uh, and that could have been the winner for Chelsea, but that's a moment, that's a moment in time, the game, you know, as a whole, really shows you where we are, um, I think Mudrick looked good off the bench, um, I think it was, I think he was appropriately utilised as well, I also think Sterling looked like useful off the bench of course he had that moment where he tried to play in square mudrick for an open goal but they just got you know an intervention in and jackson we could talk about jackson all day i think he's just i think he's actually very similar to mudrick jackson although probably way more self-confident than mudrick he's a little bit more of a character on the pitch isn't he jackson i think he's fine i just don't think he's the guy for us that he should be starting up front as chelsea striker uh, it's rank, isn't it? I mean, I'm kind of apathetic. Like, I wasn't even angry when their goals went in. I was like, yeah, this is just where we are at the moment. And it's very poor and disappointing. Uh, Chelsea won't get European football this season via pl league placement qualification. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, fortunately, we're not thinking about relegation. I think it's FA Cup or bust. And to be honest, I don't think we will win the FA Cup. There's still a lot of big boys in that competition. And I just don't think we're good enough. I just don't think we're very good. There's some hard-hitting analysis for you there. I watched... Uh, I haven't actually finished watching the video yet, but there's a great um, YouTube video from the Athletic YouTube channel. Uh, Liam Toomey's on there, but they've got the um, the TIFO analyst boys like JJ Bull and John McKenzie and Joe Devine's hosting it. And they're talking about Chelsea generally. Players that are struggling and why they're struggling and... Uh, the XG, there's a table for XG goals and against. So the goals you're expected to score and the goals you're expected to concede uh, from this like metric, right? And uh, and it tells you on the table who's got you know the best goal differential, differential, yeah, like that. And Chelsea are fifth on the table. Now I'm not entirely sure actually if this metric is where Chelsea should have been had they scored their goals and conceded the goals they should have done we should be fifth or I think it's more likely that there's just a table of who's got the best 
you know, expected goals and assists, uh, goals against and for. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and we're fifth, basically, so we're top five, which does show you that, you know, the way the team plays generally for the most part of this season uh, is pretty good. And we did demonstrate that for moments in this game, but it's just freaking... I don't want to sound like a proper football man, but it is, I think it largely does come down to like a mentality thing uh, and a belief thing, you know, because the players are clearly talented. Um, although, for example, I defer back to my previous comment, I do feel like we need a big character up the top, but maybe that's part of the mentality thing. Maybe, you know, had Jackson had a different mentality, you would have scored two today and we win three two. Anyway, it sucks, but this is where we are. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. Uh, I am here, so... Every day I make videos, you're welcome to subscribe. I'll try and get you through this turbulent time together with me. Uh, and hopefully times will be better because it's not great at the moment, is it? All right, friends. Well, I hope to see you back either way. So take care of yourselves. Peace.